Here's the thing about the Jeep Wrangler. Its reputation for reliability is less than stellar. Despite that, the Wrangler is still one of the most popular SUVs out there, and it remains Jeep's number two nameplate in the US. Today, we're looking at the reason why. We'll also talk about the 2024 Jeep Wrangler and how it stacks up against the Ford Bronco and the Toyota Land Cruiser. We'll also look at why overall Jeep sale volumes declined 30% over the last four years and what's happening with the legendary Jeep brand. A lot of time and research was done to put together this video, and I really want to know what you think. So while you're watching this, please comment below and share your thoughts. Recently, there was a research study that was done. They looked at the type of person who drives a Jeep Wrangler. Turns out, if you look at the typical Wrangler owner, there's a 72% chance it's going to be a male. His average salary would be around $115,000 a year. There's a 90% chance he will have kids, and there's a 94% chance he'll own a home. To put that into perspective, only like 65% of Americans own a home in general. So you can see the average Wrangler owner is more affluent than the average American. Well, that's a stereotypical Jeep Wrangler owner for you. Guess how many Jeep Wranglers have been sold since its existence? If you're thinking one or two million, or maybe three, well, the answer is actually five million Jeep Wranglers. This past September, Stellantis announced it has sold us five millionth Wrangler. The model was specifically a 2023 4XE Rubicon 20th Anniversary Edition in the Earl Grey Hue. The 4XE powertrain in the 20th Anniversary Edition pumps out a whopping 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. On top of that, it also has 21 miles of pure electric range. Anyway, the 5 millionth Wrangler was sold to a buyer in New Jersey. Jeep celebrated the milestone by giving the buyer a lifetime Jeep Wave customer care package worth five grand more of Jeep Performance Parts Hardware 2. According to Jeep, over 80% of all Wranglers that have been sold are still on the road today. If you're wondering why the Jeep Wrangler is so popular, well, there are many different factors at play, but funny enough, Despite its popularity, it doesn't have a strong reputation for reliability. The Jeep Wrangler also has seen its fair share of recalls. The Jeep Wrangler was built with a specific purpose in mind, and it wasn't city driving. The Wrangler offers off-roading capability purposes in all weather construction, yet its rugged and manly design appeals to all types of drivers, even those who don't go off-road. In fact, many owners rarely take their Wranglers off the tarmac. If you look especially at older Wranglers, it's clear that it wasn't really built to be a smooth driving highway vehicle. Just the suspension setup alone will tell you the Wrangler wasn't built for high city driving performance. That's why one of the most common complaints about the Jeep Wrangler from owners who say its transmission and suspension are not suitable for everyday driving. Of course, you could customize your Wrangler with something as simple as larger tires, which can make a big difference on your city driving performance. But the reality is most city folks don't customize their Wrangler with aftermarket accessories. Of course, there were many issues with poor quality components being used. It also doesn't help that in some cases, the panels in its utilitarian interior came loose over time. And so, the Wrangler started to build itself a reputation for being unstable, poor in quality, and yes, sometimes unreliable. Other owner complaints have to do with problems with its electronics, fuel pump, transmission, and axles. But to be fair, most of this type of complaints come from customers who have done some sort of modifications to their vehicle. Other complaints have to do with the vehicle wobbling and shaking, but that has more to do with the design of the car than anything else. What about the Wrangler safety rating? Well, seeing that this SUV was not designed to be safe and smooth city driving vehicle, it makes sense that the Wrangler isn't the safest vehicle on the road. But of course, not all Wrangler drivers agree with that. By the way, one survey found that the average cost to repair and maintain a Jeep Wrangler is 694 bucks a year. To put that into perspective, the average cost of all vehicle models is $652. So you can see the Wrangler costs a little bit more. The same study also found that the probability of a repair being severe is 16%, compared to an average of only 12% for all other vehicle models. But let's step aside and talk a bit about the Jeep brand in general. Jeep as a brand has been around for almost a century. In fact, this year marks its 80th year, and many people are wondering about the future outlook for the brand. Of course, that largely depends on who you ask. Here's the thing. The word Jeep is synonymous with SUVs and off-road adventures, and that's largely because Jeep was the mother of all SUVs. And when we thought of American car brands, Jeep used to be one of the first names to come to mind. But over the years, the American perspective has shifted. Jeep, which is owned by Stellantis now, has seen its sales numbers decline these last few years. More Jeeps are piling up in lots, and less people are maintaining Jeep 
brand loyalty. Yes, there are the hardcore diehard Jeep fans for sure, but its cult following has been diminishing and previous Jeep fans are looking to buy other car brands. It's been a growing shift in Jeep's consumer fan base. 2019, 47% of Jeep owners traded their former vehicles in for yet another Jeep, but fast forward to the first half of this year and only 43% did so. That said though, a big chunk of that 43% traded in their Jeep for yet another Stellantis vehicle. Jeep's best record was five years ago back in 2018. That year, Jeep sold more than 970,200 vehicles, but since then, its sales have only gone downward. For example, last year in 2022, Jeep only sold 684,600 vehicles. That's a 30% drop in just four years. Other top automakers have kept less vehicles at dealerships, but the number of cars Jeep has on its lot is a lot higher. Now, high vehicle inventory isn't always a bad sign. If a car is a popular choice, in many cases, it makes sense to carry a high inventory. The problem is, at least in Jeep's case, high inventory is becoming a disadvantage. This past June, Jeep had 77 days supply on its lot. Let me put this into perspective. So so you understand what that means. The national average of that same month was just 53 days. For example, Ford has some 76 day supply. GMC had 63 days and Chevy had 50. Hyundai had 49. Honda had 28. Good old Toyota had only 27 days supply in inventory. The sadder part is Jeep was actually offering an incentive, almost 3,300 bucks per vehicle at that same time. Yet the incentive didn't make much a dent in Jeep's leftover inventory. Then, of course, we do need to take into account the industry-wide supply and logistics constraints. Earlier this year, Jeep made the decision to discontinue the Cherokee. Production for the Jeep Wrangler and Grand Wagoneer also fell short in the first half of the year. As if that wasn't bad enough, the Jeep factories are now running seven days a week in critical status. And then, as Jeep was gearing up for the Wrangler refresh, Wrangler production also saw some hiccups too. According to Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares, Many things went wrong from the inside. He said that as a company, Jeep wants to be better and fix operational issues in a more efficient way. Consider too the impact of stricter emissions regulations. Because of that, Stellantis stopped allocating some of its most popular gas-powered Jeeps in 14 states. But let's get back to the Jeep Wrangler. The 2024 Jeep Wrangler made its official debut back in April. If you're wondering what's new in the 2024 Wrangler, well, Jeep mainly stuck to the script. We're talking about zero changes in the frame and only a few tiny adjustments to the body to improve crash safety. But there are a lot of other changes, including a Dana 44 HD full float rear axle, to factory installed winches available on Rubicon trims, to new wheel designs and adjusted front fascia. The 2024 Jeep Wrangler lineup includes the Sport, Sport S, Willy, Sahara, Rubicon, Rubicon X and Rubicon 392 trim. But let's compare the 2024 Jeep Wrangler with the 2024 Ford Bronco and Toyota Land Cruiser. In the 2024 Wrangler, you have the option to choose between a turbocharged 2 liter 4 cylinder, a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6, a plug in hybrid which uses the turbo 4, and an iron block 6.8 liter V8. The V6 can pair with either a 6 speed manual or an 8 speed automatic transmission. The other three engines are automatic friendly only. You might be wondering why I didn't say the 2024 Wrangler would also have the option of a turbo diesel engine. But that's because, at least for 2024 model, it will not. The 6.4 liter V8 and the Wrangler 322 pumps out an impressive 470 horsepower and almost 500 pound feet of torque. With the 2024 Wrangler 4XE, you also get 21 miles of EV driving and 49 MPG combined fuel economy. Its two electric motors and combustion engine can get you from 0 to 60 in 6 seconds. Not too shabby. For the budget-minded consumers, the base model Wrangler, which is the sport trim, starts at $36,095. If you want to go all out, the highest trim is the Rubicon 392, which starts at $90,590. If you want the 4XE powertrain, the base sport X trim starts at $49,995, and the highest 4XE trim is the Rubicon X, which starts at $70,290. But let's compare that to the 2024 Ford Bronco. The new Bronco is Ford's answer to the unchallenged success of the Jeep Wrangler. Similar to the Wrangler, the Bronco comes in two and four-door varieties. It also has an optional manual tranny and four-wheel drive. Even if you look at the most basic Bronco, you're looking at a 300 horsepower turbocharged inline four with a 10-speed automatic transmission or an available seven-speed manual transmission. You can also opt for a 330 horsepower twin turbo V6. The 2024 Bronco comes in nine available trims. Big Ben, Black Diamond, Heritage Edition, Outer Banks, Badlands, Everglades, Wildtrek, Heritage Limited Edition, and Raptor. 
The base 2024 Ford Bronco starts at $39,130 for the Big Ben trim and the highest trim starts at $89,835. Then we got the 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. For those who believe Toyota when it said it would be ditching the Land Cruiser, well, I got some news for you. The Land Cruiser is back and fiercer than ever. The 2024 Land Cruiser shares the same platform as the recently redesigned Lexus GX. It shares the same boxy look. The 2024 Land Cruiser is powered by a turbocharged four-cylinder hybrid powertrain, assisted by two electric motors that pump out 326 horsepower. The previous generation of the Land Cruiser was a large size SUV, but now it's been downsized to medium, which puts it closer to the Ford Bronco and Jeep Wrangler. The Land Cruiser will likely start in the mid-50s range. The vehicle is still fresh, new, and there's not a lot of details out yet, so stay tuned. But now you tell me, have you ever owned a Jeep or driven a Jeep Wrangler? What's your experience with its reliability? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.